Hey folks, I'm Funky Monkey. Welcome to another shorty. Now, you may have noticed that there's one Marvel movie from Phase 1 we haven't talked about. And yes, I haven't seen fit to include Louis Leterrier's Incredible Hulk in my Road to the Avengers. So let's talk about it now. Released in June of 2008, The Incredible Hulk plays as a loose sequel and soft reboot for the Hulk mythos, bringing it in line with the rest of the Marvel Universe. Bruce Banner has found his way to South America and is living a normal life, but a single slip-up triggers a chain of events that will spiral out of control and change Banner's life forever. Now, I've decided against a full review of this movie, being as the plot isn't all that complicated. General Ross hunts Banner, Banner hulks out, rinse and repeat, and add Abomination for the final act. Instead, let's skip straight to my thoughts on it. And I don't think I can put this one into the House of Love. The main problem that I have with this movie is the malevolence of the US Army. The top brass are planning dodgy things, and so they escalate situations and use excessive force to try and capture the Hulk. And of course, if there are two tactics destined to fail against the Hulk, they are escalation and use of excessive force. The Hulk is rage, escalation of battle, excessive force. And you can't fight this fire with fire, as is demonstrated in the Avengers. The best way to bring the Hulk on board is to get Banner on side. One could argue that the Hulk represents that most dreaded of horsemen, the Spectre of War. Only bigger. And greener. What I mean is that the Hulk is rage. The threat of violence. The unchained beast. And as much as any Hulk story is a reflection of Jekyll and Hyde, it's also, where General Thunderbolt Ross is concerned, an exploration of military futility. Peace begets peace as keeping Bruce Banner cool prevents the other guy appearing, and war begets war, as unleashing the Hulk is almost certainly going to be a very, very bad idea for the opposition. As to the movie itself, the performances are at the very least believable. Edward Norton's Banner is skittish but determined. Liv Tyler makes a good Betty Ross, to the point you can't help but wonder at her absence in the later canon. As to William Hurt's Thunderbolt Ross, he's not a pat on Sam Malone's more genial general from Ang Lee's Hulk. And while you can question the decision to make Emil Blonsky British raised, Tim Roth at least provides the grit and chops to carry the role he's been given. And actually, let's talk a little bit about that, because the most prominent reason I can see for Blonsky's inclusion is that of a final boss encounter to provide an action climax for the film. More than that, I really have to question the character's motivations. It was easy to believe that he wanted to know more about what he was up against, and I could have believed that he was mad enough to fight against the Hulk Solus. But then to spin on a dime, so mad with gamma intoxication that you'd entirely disrespect the chain of command? That doesn't ring true. Even after all of this though, The Incredible Hulk isn't a bad film. The pacing is fine. The performances are good, but it's the story that lets it down. This movie is simply the sum of its parts, and it goes to show exactly how difficult it was to build a Hulk movie in the pre-Avengers world. Oh well. I still hold out a hope that one day we can get a Hulk movie that we can be proud of. I'm Funky Monkey, wishing you better days and better movies. So long!